you put a live on 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 Discord. You're coming out one. What's up, people? Good to see you. Good to see you guys. If you can see me and if you can hear me, say hello. It's 9.09 .09 on Thursday and we are finally live for Game Design Bootcamp. I'm so happy to see you guys here. Um, some regular names. Hi, Nitin, Chandeshwar, Jenu Games, Rohit Soni, Bishwajit, Magma Thor. What's up, dude? We have some Spartans in the house. Uh, Sanjay, Reaper Creeper, Call Gaming, Prefia, Storm Riders, Raman Pawar, uh, Retro, Sahil, Nitin. Good to see you guys, man. It is so nice to have you here. Uh, thanks for being here, 9 or 9 p.m. Uh, today is going to be awesome. It's going to be epic. Call your friends, like, you know, ping them and say there's something happening. Ping your buddies, send them this link. Let's get as many people here as possible. Let's do this. Let's make video games. Let's make India a global powerhouse for video games, guys. It's time, isn't it? Everyone's always scribbing. Are, why are there no GTAs? Why is there no God of War from India? Why don't we ha you know, have awesome AAA games? And that's my goal. My goal is to build a fantastic game community and a fantastic strong game industry in India so that all of you guys um, can excel. We can have beautiful games that we can be proud of in India. So um, let me know where you guys are from. I live in Hyderabad. I've been here for about 12 years. So let me know where you guys are from. Let me know which city you're from. Um, and that'll be great. Um, Shri Ram, hello, Sanjay, Satish Krishna, Parag, Johan, San Sanjay just joined the Gamer to Maker uh, course yesterday. Good to see you here. Ancient one. Hmm. Is Aman, is that you? Rahul Parashar, another Spartan who just joined. Somdatta, who's going to be joining soon. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. All right. All right. So um let us start right today is gonna be not just today today and the next two days are going to be all about video game is all going to be about game design so i have been on social media on youtube on instagram talking to you guys and there are two things right the first thing is that in the game industry um i've been around for 14 years and I meet people, I meet my friends who are from other studios, I meet like CEOs and founders um, and they say, Rahul, where are all the game designers? We are struggling, right? We have a problem, Houston, because in the Indian game industry, we don't have enough decent game designers. Like we don't have game designers, period. We don't have good game designers. And the truth is that if you really want to build good games, you need good game designers and the Indian game industry right now is actually suffering because there are no good game designers, right? So that's one part of the problem. The other part of the problem is I see you guys and most people, uh, young people don't even know what game design means. They're like, oh, game designing means that I'm using Blender and I'm using Unity. I'm like, no, that's not game designing. We'll talk about that. So the, on one side, there's a huge shortage. And on the other side, basically, people don't even understand what game design really is. And that's a serious problem. So my idea is to actually um, bridge this gap. And the other serious problem in India is there is no training for game designers. There are lots and lots of courses where people say, you know, we're going to teach you game design. We're going to teach you that, teach you that. But it's not. It's either a game art course or it's like a, some random Unity download kind of course. And they say game design. They don't even understand what game design means. How are they going to teach it? So this is why I established Game Auto Maker. And I started basically what at this point is India's only authentic game design course. But I'll talk to you more about that later. So, all right, guys. Mm. It's time to get started. Give me a minute. I am going to share my screen. All 
All right. Let me know if you can see things. Let me know if you can see my screen. Hi, Vaishnavi. How are you? Uh, Vaishnavi over here is the first girl in uh, the Game to Make a Game Design and uh, Production course. So welcome, Vaishnavi. She's going to be uh, one of the titans of Game Design One Day. So good to see you here. All right, guys. Uh, you can see my screen. So let us let us get started. Okay. All right, so today's agenda. First, I want to talk about what's going to happen. Today is 19th May. It is day one of the boot camp. There are going to be three days. Today, we're going to talk about what game design really means and what skills are needed to be a game designer. We're going to also talk about whether programmers and artists need to understand game design. Lots of people say, hey, man, I'm a programmer. I don't really need to un understand game design because I'm just going to be writing code. And artists are like, mm, I don't know, game design, I don't care, I'm an artist. And I'm going to tell you why that is not a good idea. And lastly, we're going to be talking about the various roles within game design and what they do. And I will be talking more about day two and day three. So make sure that you pay attention about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen day after tomorrow. Some big announcements. I have guests coming on. It's going to be awesome. All right. Next up, who am I? Who is Rahul Segal and why should you listen to him? Right. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about myself really fast. I am the founder of Roach Interactive, it, uh, which is my own game company, game studio, as well as we are very active in the education space. And basically, Roach Interactive uh, owns uh, Gamer to Maker, which is my online game school. Right now, I am. I have a day job. I am the creative lead at a company called Entain. Entain is essentially the world's largest online casino and sports betting company. It is uh, basically a UK-based company, which is worth around twenty billion dollars. And the games that I make in my day job have earned. I don't know. I kind of stopped counting at about like seventy million dollars. Um, so that's that's pretty much the revenue that the games that I have made have made. Now they're not my. I like. I don't get that money. You know, I get a good salary, but you know, that's the amount of money that the company makes, and it's a, it's a company that's doing really well. That's good. Right. Next up, my teaching. I actually started teaching game design and production in 2010. And that means I've been doing this for 12 years. I started teaching at Backstage Pass in Hyderabad. I also taught at VIT Bhopal. I still actually go there for guest lectures, etc. And then also Srishti School of Art, Design and Technology, Bangalore. I was actually teaching the master's students over there. So the question is, what happened, Rahul? Why aren't you still teaching at these places? And I'll tell you why. It's because I myself, I went to a really good game school. I went to Vancouver Film School to learn how to make video games. I actually used to be in the Merchant Navy and I went to Vancouver Film School. So I know what a world-class game education looks like. And when I used to tell the people at the, these colleges, guys, um, can we improve things? Can we make this a more practical course? Can we bring this teaching up to an international standard? They were not interested because they're like, oh, we're getting money, we're getting students, we're filling our batches, why should we improve? So I tried doing this for 10, year, 10 years and I got fed up. I said, all right, guys, it's time for me to start my own thing, which is why I started Game of Maker. Right now, uh, where have I worked? I've worked, I started my career at Piranha Games in Vancouver, um, which is a beautiful game company uh, over there. And then I went to Game Loft, where I got my first break as game designer. And then I worked for a lot of companies. I don't really have the time to show you all the logos and talk about them. But there's one which is called Hit Pick Soup, Wicked Superstars, in which I was the consultant creative director for a while. All right. Now, enough about myself. And now let's get into it. Let's talk about game design. Now, First off, let's try and understand what game design really is. You keep hearing this word. Okay, how many of you guys, tell me in the chat, how many of you guys have heard this term game designing, right? It's all over uh, YouTube. It's all over my comments. Everybody keeps saying, oh, game designing, game designing. I'm doing game designing. 
let me know if you have heard this term term anywhere and i'll tell you something about it all right now people say oh i'm making a game in unity or unreal i'm game designing people say oh i'm creating some kind of art using blender i'm hearing game designing right um i'm doing character modeling i'm doing rigging and i'm doing animation i'm doing game designing right now game designing is a term which confuses the hell out of everybody because it's if you're making a game it's called game designing right now no the truth is that game designing there is no such thing as game designing and one of the things is that what happens is that a lot of colleges a lot of institutes also uh they bank they use this confusion about what game design really is and they say we're going to do game designing and everybody like, oh okay game designing and this everyone's kind of running around no one really understands what the heck game designing is all about and let's talk about that now okay there is something called game development which all of you know what exactly is game development game development is the process of actually making games it's the overall process of making games right game development actually has four processes right the first one is game design next game programming so rohit is asking what separates game dev with game design and i'm explaining that to you right what does it mean when when someone says they're game designer um this is exactly what i'm saying so the overall process of game development has within it four processes game design game programming game art and game testing so all of these four processes together are called game development now there is confusion in india someone says i'm a game developer they usually mean game programmer right now this is a cultural thing abroad if somebody says that they are a game developer they can be a designer they can be an artist they can be a programmer they can be a tester it means they are part of the game development process so there is a lot of confusion what is game development what is game design and hopefully this will help in clearing it up the overall process is called game development and there are four processes game design game programming game art and game testing there are actually more but these are the four fundamental processes right now what exactly is game design let us talk about that game design means that you are going to ask and answer the following questions and these are who is going to play this game this is the first question that as game designer you have to think about who is the target market for this game is it you know is it males is it females is it kids uh is it like people from the age of 16 to 24 what is their geography what is the target market right as a game designer you really need to understand this because what you are going to design depends on the people who are going to play the game right you can't um for example you can't make a rogue like for little kids <laughs> you know that's not going to work um so next what is the objective of this game how do you win at this game for example you complete all the levels of this game and you beat the final boss and that's how you win this game right how do you win that's one of the biggest questions next up what exactly can and cannot the player do in this game so the game rules for for example the game designer says okay the um the player will uh, the player character is going to run if you press the space bar it's going to jump if you press the space bar or on an xbox uh controller if you press the x is going to shoot if you press this he's going to jump so what exactly can the player do and what can the player not do um this is what the game designer has to decide next up very importantly feelings right games are about feelings we don't play games because we you know we want to achieve something in our lives we play games because we want to be entertained games are entertainment and 
they are all about feelings. When you're creating a video game, essentially what you're doing is you are manipulating the feelings of players. You're making them feel angry and frustrated and happy and gratified or whatever it is, right? Essentially, when you're making games, that's what it is. You're manipulating feelings. Now, as a game designer, it is very, very, very important to understand what the player is feeling overall in the game and what the player is feeling from moment to moment. That is what the game designer does. The game designer creates an experience for the player and makes sure that the player is feeling a certain experience at a certain time. So when you're playing a game and you're fighting a boss that's really hard, you get frustrated, right? You get mad. You're like, why is this boss not dying? And that's deliberate. You are deliberately being frustrated by the game designer because when you actually finish and you kill the boss, you are going to feel this sense of achievement. So that frustration gives rise to achievement. And those are feelings which are actually created by the game designers. That is a very, very specific feeling. Okay. Um, next. How can we make the player feel that way? So psychology, psychology is a huge part of the, of the game designer's work. You need to understand psychology. You need to understand what the player is feeling. And you need to understand what to do in the game to actually make players feel a certain way. So essentially, this is the job of a game designer. Right now. What is the game designer's role in a game studio? Uh, Pulkir is asking, how many types of game designers are there and what are there? And that is there in this presentation. Hang on. I'm going to be talking about that very, very soon. All right. First of all, in a game studio, you have someone called the product owner. Now, who is the product owner? The product owner is the boss. Um, the product owner is the person, for example, who is the owner of a game studio who says, okay, this is what we are going to build. We are going to build a roguelike. We are going to build a mobile game for children. Right. So the product owner is the person in a big company. It could be a product manager in a small company. It could be the CEO, the director, basically the person who decides what is going to be created. Right. It's not like the game designer is going to be like, wake up in the morning, and say, hmm, I think I'm going to create an MMO today. No, it's not like that. The product owner, the business owner essentially tells someone um, what to do. And the product owner essentially tells the game designer, gives directions to the game designer as to the kind of game that is going to be made and gives some guidance uh, to the game designer. And once the game designer has understood what the requirement of a game, the game is, um, along with the product owner, the game designer, there is going to be conceptualization. They're going to come up with an idea. They're going to come with a concept. And then there is going to be documentation. So a really, really big part of a game designer's job is to create documentation, right? Now, there are some similarities. Some people are saying, um, some people are saying director. There are some similarities, but it's not exactly the same as a movie director, right? Next up, once the game designer has made the documentation, this documentation will be seen by the game programmer, by the game tester, and by the game artist, right? So the game programmer needs to understand what the functionality of the game is going to be. You know, um, what happens? Does the player jump? Does the player shoot? Uh, is there a double jump? Or what are the abilities? What are the weapons? What do I have to implement? So the game programmer gets guidance on what has to be done from the game designer. The game tester needs to test the game. So the game tester is, is going to understand the functionality of the game again from the documentation um, so that they can test it. And the game artist is going to understand what the world looks like, what the visuals are, what kind of characters are there, what kind of environments are there, what the colors are, etc., etc. So essentially, all the rest of the game team is guided by the game designer as to what they are going to create. So remember, 
it means that as a game designer you need to understand the game in your head so the primary thing that a game designer can do is that you can before the game is made you are already playing the game in your head you know what the game is like right maybe not 100% right but you know have a fair idea of what the game is and you have to transmit that knowledge you have to put that vision of what the game is into the heads of the rest of the team which is the game programmer which is the game tester and the game artist essentially that is a game designer's job right now let's talk about game design documentation game design documentation is basically the stuff that the that the game designer creates the game designers create and there are several different kinds of game design documentation that i'm going to be sharing with you very very soon first of all there is something called a concept document now what exactly is a concept document a concept document is a very very brief document about what the game actually is so what i'm going to be doing now guys is that i'm going to be um, i'm going to be actually showing you what a concept document looks like okay hang on a second okay so if you guys can see hopefully let me know i'm going to zoom in a little bit here so this is this is a game design this is a game concept document which is created by the students of the gamer to make a course so a concept document is a very very brief document it's not a very detailed document it gives you a rough idea of what the game is so this is for a game called uh, of course the name was changed but this is project silver this is a concept document so the concept document as you guys as let me zoom in a little bit more uh, this is uh, a high concept this is a 2d uh, side scrolling rogue like platformer so high concept is where you just have a very very brief description of the game there is only one paragraph where it says what the primary gameplay loop is um there is one which says what the abilities are and what you can see that is that he, this is made by nikhil who is nikhil are you there if you are there say hello this is one of this is one of the best i know right <laughs> this is pranav so pranav is a prime programmer for this game and he's right here hey pranav so this is uh, for example a little mock up that the game designer has made um this is uh, of course a lot of things have changed this is just an initial document this is the art style uh, this is the monetization and this is the competitive analysis so the game concept document is a very very brief document which is one or two pages which from which you can quickly understand what the game is right and from this game design document comes from this game design document comes something much much bigger which is called the, from the concept document comes the game design document now i'm going to be sharing something very very interesting with you guys this is um this is a, a document that i had actually made in vancouver film school this is what a real game design document looks like let me show you so this is a game design document that i had made in vancouver film school sorry it was anirudh sorry about that um i get confused with all these discord names all right so um so this is a game called karma uh, which i had made a concept for vancouver film school and i'm going to show you what a game design document no this is not 10 pages this is a lot more than 10 pages this is 51 pages long okay so this is what a real game design document looks like basically a game design document is a very 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 detailed document imagine that you're the game designer um you have to create a document that tomorrow say suppose you disappear disappear or you get kidnapped the they can actually make a game exactly without you being there so i'm going to quickly go through this is a 51 page document that i had created in vancouver film school um so this is just the content this is design history um this is the game overview which is basically it's a much larger and most expanded version game overview high concept uh common questions what is the game why create this game 
then you have something called feature set. This is where you describe all the features. Um, this is where, so over here you give a feature overview and here you actually describe the features. For example, there's something like health. Instead of just describing health, you actually put in numbers. Say, suppose you eat bread, you get 200 health um, and there you go. So this is like, I'm till now I'm, I'm describing health. I'm describing wealth. Um, I'm, this is something called a mock-up. So this is something which you, a game designer really, really, uh, quickly makes in Photoshop. This is what that looks like. And then as you can see, there are lots and lots of numbers. This is a very, very detailed document and the programmers can just look at this document and they will know exactly what to make. So once again, as you can see, uh, this is again a mock-up that I had made using Photoshop and this is going on and on and on. Like I'm going to kind of go to the end. So this is what a professional game design looks like. The game design document looks like. And this is, if you're a game designer, this is the main job of the game designer. So you can see I have made kind of like a, a basic map over here and I'll show you some other cool stuff. Um, this is what happens if you die. Um, this is the gameplay. This is a detailed walkthrough. This is about the NPCs. There are some things. This is the dialogue system. This is how the dialogue system works. Uh, these are the enemies. This is, you know, I've just kind of downloaded some, some references of enemies. Um, this is the camera. These are the different screens. And this is a little bit about the game world. Um, and also, I want to show you something very interesting, which is towards the end. These are like each character is described over here. A uh, little bit about the character and the weapons, vehicles, and for example, the controls. Right now, this is in the game design document. You have to describe what the controls of the game are. And then this is the game interface. Basically, this is what the flow at the game is. This is a splash screen, all the menus, and all that kind of thing. These are the main menus. Um, this is the user interface. This is the game view. All right, I'm gonna kind of stop doing that now. Right, uh, there are some questions. Yes, Rahul, if you want to be a game designer, you need to know Photoshop or you need to know at least GIMP, right? Yeah, Andrea is saying, is the Bible? Yes, the game design document is kind of like uh, the Bible of the game. Tanish Patel, very good point. So if I write a doc in the first few days, I can chill while the game is, game is being made. You're actually right. That's not a bad point because what happens is that the game designer does a lot of work in the beginning where everybody is chilling out. The game designer is like sitting and making documentation. And after that, it actually gets a little bit chill because a programmer comes to you and says, hey, man, how do you do this? I said, did you read page 67 of the game design document? And the programmer is like, oh, okay, okay. And just reads the document and that's it pretty much. There have to be some clarifications done. But the game designer's job is mostly in the beginning of the game, right? Um, uh, who makes the concept art? The game? No, the concept artist makes the concept art for the game. Okay, right. So I'm going to go back to my, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen here now. Yes. Oh, yes. Also, um, that's a really good point. So, um, this one second, let me share. Right. So essentially, uh, yes, the game design document keeps getting updated. It's not like you make one single game design document and that stays. Okay. The game design document keeps updating as, uh, the game keeps progressing the game keeps changing so this is a concept doc which i showed you and then there's a game design doc which i showed you and there's something called a feature design doc so it's possible that if you guys are joining a mobile game company and you're working on a live ops game you're not going to be making a game design document but you as a game designer will be asked to create a feature say okay the game is already there you are going to create a new leaderboard you're going to create a new system you're going to create a competitive system and you will actually have to write a document not for the entire game but for the feature design doc okay um so that, that's a feature design doc it's like a game design doc but it's only for a particular feature okay all right now after you've 
after a game designer has made the game design document, what happens? Do you just like hand it over to the team and just buzz off? No, I wish, but that's not how it happens because it's an iterative process, right? You're going to you're going to have some ideas, but when you actually build it, things might differ because a game is based on feelings. So the game designer's job is to actually test the build of the game and see if the experience of the game is what was intended. And then while the game is being built, this is what happens. The game programmer is going to be giving the game build, interacting with the game build. So everybody is going to be interacting with each other through the game build and the design document. This is how a game is made. And this is how a game designer coordinates. The game designer has to play the game from the beginning, even when it's like really buggy at this page state, and then keep working, keep updating the design document. Right now, next, let's find out about what the skills are for a game designer if you want to be a game designer or if you want to understand game design like i mentioned before that you can be a game designer okay so jarvis is saying difference between level game designer and level designer and i have a full section on that lots and lots of confusion so i'm going to be clearing that up soon no graphic design is not level design Okay, what do you need to be a good game designer? Let's talk about that. Firstly, it's important that you play games, right? It's the only job in the world in which a job description is, dude, do you play a lot of games? If you don't play a lot of games, you're not getting this job. Literally, to be a game designer, you have to have spent many, many hours playing different games. And you can make like, a lot of money as a game designer literally for playing games all day i'm not kidding so because if you've played a lot of games you have a lot of things to draw upon and you'll be able to understand game genres you'll be understand game able understand different game mechanics so it's important and it's it doesn't work say okay i only play pubg or i only play like halo i only play shooters if you want to be a good game designer it's a good idea to play different genres, different platform, play games with depth, play games with depth in narrative, etc. So as a game designer, it's good to have experience of playing lots of games. Okay, next, uh, good reading and writing skills. Now, as you have already seen, there is a lot of writing. You saw that document, it was 51 pages long, and it was written all by me, and I loved it. Okay, you have to like writing and obviously it means your language skills have to be decent. Like if you can't, if you don't have good language skills, especially in English, it's going to be difficult for people to actually uh, understand the document. So you, reading and writing skills have to be good. You have to be able to communicate clearly and effectively. Now, mostly the languages that game designers use is English. It does not mean that you have to be like Shashi Tharoor, you know, and with absolutely fantastic English. It does mean that you have to be confident, right? Even if your, your English is not that awesome, if you're confident, if you're bold, if you can get your message across the other person, um, that's what's important. Because you're going to be writing documents, but you're also going to be having a lot of meetings. You're going to be talking to people, having video calls with them, going in meeting rooms and talking and explaining things on whiteboards and all that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so that is very, very important. You have to have good communication skills. Now, if you're an introvert, if you're the kind of person who likes to, who doesn't like talking to people, doesn't like being with them face to face, then it's going to be kind of difficult to be a game designer. I'm not going to lie. However, if you want to be a game designer, you can actually improve that, right? Game designers have to talk to people. You don't have to be an extrovert, but you have to be willing to communicate with people. It's very, very important, right? And a lot of what you do is going to be telling people what's going to happen. So you have to have the confidence and presentation skills. Now, this is something which I learned a lot in Vancouver Film School, right? Uh, ideally, a good game course should actually 
teach you this. It's not something which is is found in India. In Gamer to Maker, we have a lot of presentations. Um, we make sure that we, as a team, I make people come in front, present their concepts to people, and this is a big thing. So you have to have the confidence and presentation skills as a game designer. Okay. Um, Yes, so Zuess Lab says there should be good communication between game designer, game artist, game programmer. Yes, exactly. Um, the game designer has to be able to express themselves to the team. Yes, um, Somdatta is saying, do we need to know basics of game programming and game art as well, like an all right knowledge of both? And Somdatta, you are very right. If you want to be a good game maker, you should have an idea of all the disciplines. Because it really helps. Now, if, for example, I am uh, I'm a game designer and I'm going to be telling a programmer what to do, I should have an idea, basic idea of game programming. I myself, I myself uh, know a little. I'm not a very good programmer, but I do understand how to write code. And I'm a decent artist. Like I can do 3D art. I can use Photoshop. So essentially, I have an understanding of the different roles. Okay. Um, yes, definitely a commerce guy can be a game designer. Hi, Vaishnavi. Uh, Vivek, your uh, story writing tips I'll be doing on a different stream. So people asking about this stream, guys, don't worry. The stream is going to be there. It's going to be there for a limited amount of time. Uh, and so you can actually go back to it and you can refer it. Don't worry about that. Okay. It's not going to be there forever. It's probably going to be there for a limited time after, uh, after the, uh, the event. Okay. Next up, very important that you know how to deal with people of different mindsets, because as a game designer, you're dealing with programmers. Now programmers think very differently. Programmers are essentially very, very logical people. And artists, on the other hand, are very emotional people. So as a game designer, your job is to be a bridge um, between uh, the artists and the programmers. And you have to be able to communicate with them. And you have to be able to make sure that they can communicate with each other. So dealing with people of different mindsets and different characteristics and different personalities is something that a game designer uh, should know. So, um, uh, I, uh, Raj Shekhar Paul, you see, it's helpful to have an understanding of art. You don't have to have an artistic outlook, but it's good for you to understand um, the, uh, the outlook and the experience of artists. Okay. All right. Um, all right, guys, so I want to take this opportunity to tell you that some of you guys, the ones who are really serious about game design and understanding game design, I have a treat for you guys. Tomorrow, there's going to be a workshop, okay? There's going to be a workshop on game design, a practical thing in which you guys are going to be able to do something. I'm going to talk about it soon. Also... Um, there is going to be on day two or day three or both, there's going to be a demo, a games demo. So in Gamer to Maker, we don't just like talk about games. We actually make games. So there are going to be game teams. Uh, and some of you guys are here in the chat. I know uh, there's going to be a game demo by the Gamer to Maker game design course. So that's going to be awesome. Do not miss that. Okay, now let's talk about the burning question, which is, programmers and artists uh, okay so uh, some questions about technical designer uh, a technical designer does both programming and graphic designing graphic designing is not a part of game development it is art right so a technical artist understands both the technical side which is a game engine and also the creative side which is maybe Maya or Max or Photoshop. That's what technical art is. I actually have a video on technical art on my YouTube channel. It's awesome, guys. It'll really be able to explain what technical art is to have a look at it. Okay, coming back to the topic. Uh, coming back to the topic. Um, I am a programmer or artist. Why do I need to understand game design? 
I get this a lot from programmers and artists who say, game design, not important for me, right? And the answer to this is, okay, you're going to be working, with, if you're a programmer or artist, you're going to be working with a game designer, a game programmer, a game artist, and a game tester. Now, these are the four roles, the four main roles in a game studio, and all of you guys are going to be working on something, and that is called feelings, right? You're not creating an uh, app which is going to help people to book tickets for flights, okay? You're not creating some software which is being used for accountancy, right? Um, you are creating feelings. Now, it is very, very important for you as an artist and a programmer to understand you're not creating dry functionality. You're creating a feeling in the minds of players, so which means that you as a programmer or as an artist have to understand the psychology of the player who you are creating the game for. Now, you need to understand the experience, right? Great game programmers, the best, the most accomplished game programmers and game artists that I have seen in my career, they understand the experience which they are creating. And essentially, game design is how you create a particular experience. So it is very, very important. Now, if you want to be an ordinary average programmer, go for it. Or an average artist, go for it. But if you want to be above average, if you want to excel, if you want to be world class, you need to have an understanding of game design, of game art, of game programming, right? To be a world class game maker, we see, which is one of the reasons why in India we have we don't make we are not able to make such great games because people have the attitude, I am a programmer. Why do I need to understand anything about game design? And they only do their job. It's one of the reasons we have a difficult time making these games. Sumdatta is asking, what about switching between uh, these roles after getting a certain amount of experience, game art, game design? Generally, uh, Sumdatta, you can't really change between game art and game design. If you're working for a smaller company or if you're an entrepreneur, you can do both, right? My role, for example, right down, right now is I also do game design and I also do art direction. So if you're a creative director, for example, at a creative director's role, you are doing art direction and you're also doing game design, right? So generally, um, content game design is actually creating the content which is inside the game. I'll talk about a little bit about this soon, okay? Uh, every single day, guys, 9 or 9 p.m. for three days for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, 9 or 9 p.m. Right? Um, Anish is asking, I'm working as an animator and would you like to same stuff in games. Can game it or make it? Yes, definitely it can. Uh, definitely can. All right. Now, a lot of questions about game design disciplines. Uh, Rahul, uh, what are the different kinds of game design disciplines? And that's what I'm going to be talking about now. Okay, what is level design, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So within game design, within game design, there are a lot of disciplines. Firstly, there's something called world and level design, which I'll be talking about. So the world, what is the difference between world design and level design? Actually, nothing. It's pretty much the same thing. The game world is the entire universe of the game and level design is actually creating it bit by bit so level designers actually build the game world piece by piece okay uh next up mission design now mission design is something which is a, a, a discipline is usually found in much larger game studios in AAA game studios for example if you're working on gta or if you're working on the witcher or something like that you are going to be able to have 10 or 15 designers right so there's going to be a mission designer for each particular mission. If you're working on a massive open world game for millions of dollars, 
there are going to be people who are actually working. So if, for example, uh, there's going to be one mission, which is going to be one hour long, which is going to have its own storyline, which is going to have its own cinematics, have its own characters, have its own boss fight. So one particular desi a designer will be given, because it's a huge game, so one particular mission designer is actually going to be working on one particular mission. So maybe the game is like 15 hours long and each mission is three hours long. So there'll be five different mission designers working on it because of the size of the game. This usually happens in AAA studios. Uh, next up, user interface. So user interface design designing the controls, designing the menus, designing um, uh, the HUD, etc., is also a thing. And this is usually done by a game designer. So in a small company, maybe there will be one or two game designers. You'll be doing world and devil design. You'll be doing mission design. You'll be doing user interface. You'll also be doing story and narrative. Now, lots of people asking about story and narrative. Now, which is why I say as a game designer, you should be uh, you should be watching, you should be playing games with good story. It's very, very important because most of the time, it's the level designer's job to actually write the story and narrative of the game. Um, next up, systems design. Somebody's actually asking about systems design, and that's great. Systems design is... When you are designing something, we're designing a group of mechanics. So say, suppose you are designing a multiplayer system. Imagine there is a multiplayer mode, then there is a single player mode. So it's possible that there's going to be a, a game designer whose speciality is to do systems design or one particular, if there are five different systems in a game, such as multiplayer, or for example, there is a particular game mode, or there's 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 a, a campaign mode, there is a, a, a multiplayer mode, it's possible that there is a separate designer for the multiplayer and a separate designer for the offline mode. Um, also, for example, you can even have a system designer who's only working on the leaderboard system of a game. So that essentially is a system. And in large companies where you have hundreds of, you know, hundreds of people working, 200, 300, 400 people working on AAA games, you have people who are working on system design. And there is one ring to rule them all, and that is a lead designer. So a lead designer is basically the boss of all the designers, right? In AAA companies, you may have 10, 20, 30 people, and there is going to be a lead designer, uh, sometimes called the design director or lead designer, who's going to be actually uh, monitoring all these different designers. So the lead designer is the one who's in charge of the design of the game, in, the ch in charge of the game design, um, uh, game design document, right? Um, so essentially, these are the different kinds of designers. Now, you can be probably when you're starting off in your career as a game designer, you'll probably have to do all these things. You know, in a small company, there will be one or two, uh, uh, there may be one or two people who are game designers and they will actually have to do all these things. Now, tomorrow, if you're in a big company with 100 people, you have 20 designers who are working on all these uh rolls together okay all right now guys let's talk about the big thing what is level design right lots and lots and lots and lots of confusion right lots and uh lots of confusion about what level design so i want to talk about that okay um okay i get a lot of messages from people saying oh rahul check this out and this is just an example from the internet i created this so i took blender or, oh no, I took Unreal. So I launched the Unreal Engine. And uh, what I did was that I got these assets and I put these lights and I put all these assets together and I made this scene, right? And then I put this camera over here. I created these effects and I took this beautiful screenshot. And this is a game level. And I'm a level designer. Okay. How did you like my level? And my answer is 
that is not level design that is not level design you are creating an environment in a game engine that's not really a thing okay no one's going to pay you for making a pretty scene inside taking assets from here and there and creating a pretty scene inside a game now if you actually created those assets then you can call yourself an environment artist but if you're taking assets and you're putting them together in a game engine that's not level design what is level design i will tell you what level design really is this is level design what exactly is this this is a sketch this is something i found from the internet this is a flow chart this is a diagram of what a game level looks like so as you can see this is uh, a top down view of a game level and it says okay for example you can see a red star here that's where the level starts right and you can see a blue star as to where the level ends so essentially uh, i'm guessing that the player lands with aircraft where you can see the aircraft and then takes off uh, you can see where the enemies are going to come. You can see where the spawn points for the enemies are, all that kind of thing. Okay, so a level designer's job, a level designer actually takes the game engine and then the game programmer implements the functionality and then the game designer or the level designer actually takes this functionality into the game engine and actually builds the level so they place assets um and then they place triggers and spawn points they're like okay this is where the player is going to spawn the player is going to walk a little bit and then there's going to be a trigger and there's going to be enemy that's going to spawn um basically the level designer says okay after there is an enemy kill then this door is going to open and then the player is going to go through this door and after that there's going to be perhaps a box of ammo or perhaps another enemy um, over there something like that okay next cinematic cutscene so level designer also actually carries the story by pl placing cinematic cutscenes okay so after this player has killed this particular enemy or this mini boss there's going to be a cinematic cutscene which is going to start playing which is going to explain something to the player that is also the job of a level designer right creating and adjusting difficulty now when you create an enemy when you place weapons for example if you don't place any ammunition in a level what happens it's really hard to kill enemies right if there's no ammo how do you kill enemies in some games you actually have very less ammo which is part of the difficulty curve and as a level designer it's your job to actually do that okay next up introducing new mechanics so for example all right a level designer says okay in this level the player is going to learn a double jump or the player is going to learn to get a grappling hook in this level so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually create the functionality i'm going to block the player and the player not be able to progress and unless there is this high building and the player uses the grappling hook to go which means that now the player knows how to use a grappling hook because he or she has to climb on this building that is also a level designer's job right placing we weapons and pickups this is where the sniper rifle is going to be this is where the ammo is going to be this is where the health uh, pack is going to be this is where there's going to be a, like a, 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 a kind of like a special item or some kind of dialogue or some kind of tape recorder which tells him about what happened to his dad or that kind of thing right um yes so basically the level designer builds the game the game designer also talks about what happens in the game many times the level designer is also the game designer in a small company the game designer also does the level okay in in other companies the mission designer kind of guides the level designer as to what to do now okay see this might seem complicated guys the only way to really figure this out is to actually make a game right so uh in 
in in gamer to maker we actually have a bunch of level designers game designers coming coming to together and doing this stuff so the in, only way to really understand this in depth is to actually build a game yes uh, the level designer does have full idea uh, about it okay all right guys so for now um i'm going to take some questions now okay um yes so at the start of the game the boss needs to come beat up the product humility yes that's very important uh it's yeah so this is going to be there for some time the the recording uh shravan money is asking does this only involve documentation about the level I don't really understand that question um uh yes okay any special discount for the viewers of the gd course Ah, it didn't understand. Yes, the map that I showed is usually made in Photoshop, right? So if you want to be, if you want to be, uh, if you want to be a level designer, if you want to be a game designer, guys, it's very, very uh, important to know Photoshop. Or if you like, if you can't afford to buy Photoshop, that's fine. You can get GIMP, right? GIMP is also a really good program. I personally use Photoshop, but I also know how to use GIMP. Okay, ancient ones asking. What are good small game design studios that are possible by small indie studios? Game designs. Um, that's a good question. You actually have uh, a whole list of that in Gamer to Maker, right? Uh, one of them is actually uh, a tower defense. So the simplest strategy game that a small team can make is actually a tower defense game. You can make platformers, you can make runners, you can make a tower defense game. Um, there's actually a list of small projects which is there in in Gamer to Maker. Uh, what do I have to do to become a game designer? You have to actually build. Uh, you have to actually build games. Uh, I want to do an internship in game designing. Um, where can we get game ideas for reference? Gamer to Maker course. I have a whole cheat sheet there. Uh, can you suggest game a college for game programming in India? um game programming is something which is very uh which is there at a lot of college but the problem with game programming also is that they don't it is not taught to you by people from the game industry right so in gamer to maker uh, we actually have a very experienced mentor that teaches you the basics of game programming um okay all right guys so now I am going to talk about day two. Today was day one. It's just the warm up. It was just the warm up. We're going to go deep. We're going to go deep into games. We're going to do, go deep into game design. And let me give you a taste of what's happening tomorrow. So tomorrow is day two, 9 or 9 p.m. We're going to talk about the career prospects for game designers. What kind of career can you have? Right? Like, can you make money? Can you get a job? Like, is it a good career? Is it a strong career? Can you make a living? Can you do well? Can you buy a car? Can you buy a house? Like, what is the career prospects? What kind of salaries do game designers get, right? This is a big one. Salaries. I'm going to be discussing salaries. And I'm also going to be talking about working conditions for game designers and a typical day in the life. So basically, what do you do in the morning? A typical day for a game designer. What does a game designer do? What does it look like? And lastly, how to convince your parents that game dev is a good deal. So tell me here, guys, how many of you have parents that don't want you to join game development? Or if you have supportive parents, let me know. Let me know what your parents think about game careers. I know some of you have different kinds of Right. Um, it's there. It's there. Uh, okay. Yes. Any activity? Okay. And I have a special treat. Now, if you guys are serious about game design, I have a very special treat to you. I don't know. Some of you may have uh, seen the live I had last night. Uh, if you didn't, go on my YouTube channel after this live and look at Shagun Shah. So Shagun is a good friend of mine. He's one of India's most 
eminent game designers. Shagun was the lead game designer at Baijus. Now, Baijus is like a multi-billion dollar company and he was lead designer there. He was also game designer at Zynga. He's a good friend. Very, very well-educated, very smart dude. Um, and he is going to be having a game design workshop. And guess what? The big surprise is this game design in this game design workshop, guys, you will be able to actually submit things. You'll get a day. He's going to give you something to do. You guys will be able to go and actually work on it and submit it. And we are going to check those submissions. Okay. And there is going to be a prize for that. There is going to be a prize and that's going to be a partial scholarship to the gamer to make a game design program. So this workshop, make sure that you guys don't miss it. Firstly, you learn practically about game design. And if you do well, you're going to have a chance to actually get a very, very good scholarship, a part scholarship for the Gamer to Make a Course. Um, all right. So uh, my parents really supported me. I'm Rockstar in dinner. Pretty happy with them. And awesome. That's great. Master ability. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Um, okay. Some people says they have supportive parents, uh, lots of supportive parents, uh, Rohit Sony, supportive parents. That's good. Um, I'm doing currently unit Udemy courses for unity and unreal engine. What do I need to learn? So I complete my portfolio and experience. Uh, so once unity and Udemy course is okay to start, right? It teaches you ABC. So. It's like an ABC book that teaches you A to Z. And that's fine for a start because you need to understand ABC. But it doesn't teach you processes. It doesn't teach you the practical strategy, the actual methodology of building the game. You can build it by yourself at home, sitting in your bedroom, and you'll make one game and that's it. But it's not going to get you a job because there are thousands of people like you watching those same tutorials and making those small solo games and putting it on your portfolio. There are literally lakhs of people doing the same thing. So if you want to get a job, you have to go to go to the next level. You have to do make group projects. You have to make polished games, right? And that is something which you can do by being part of a structured program, okay? Um, okay, so that is tomorrow. So make sure that you do not miss that. Okay. All right, people. So I will see you tomorrow. Um, and also don't forget, there's going to be a demo, uh, by the teams of Gamer to Maker. All right. So, uh, let me know how that was guys. Uh, did you learn something today? Let me know what your aha moment was uh, during the live today. Was there something that you had no idea about? Was there something that blew you away? Let me know. Um, Nick says, Rahul, I just don't uh, enjoy my current job. I'm tired of the regular same work. Nothing happens. Um, okay. Yeah, man. I... What can I say? G making game is fantastic. It's not easy, but it's very, very satisfying. And I hope, uh, I hope you can actually uh, manage that. So thank you, guys. Do not miss it. 9.09 p.m. tomorrow. Sharp. Be there. And I will see you there on Game to Make a Bootcamp Day 2. Let's go.